I'm a working here. So this is a Rogers two story big <laughs> big building and what he's doing is he's taking two two uh, shipping containers and stacking them up and I think it's uh, 20 24 feet or so between them I'll have to look I forgot I've worked on so many projects here lately I'm having a hard time keeping the should be in my file name. I try to put the name, like Roger's two-story container is the file. But anyway, I forgot to put the size in there. But he's going to have windows in it, and which are cool. And this roll-up door right here. And I've got pretty much the model pretty much done. Not done, but close enough to where I can start laying out sheets now. This is something I don't show very often are like how I go from the model to printed drawings and I kind of got it started here this is the cover page and of course I need to change this so I just what I did was I you know cheated I copied another file so I would have something to edit you know uh, so I'll do that but I'm going to focus on I think I already have some elevations up here one thing that's frustrating about layout is it's a little bit slow going between the sheets, especially if you have the uh, resolution turned up on your drawings. And by resolution, what I mean is in SketchUp, you can control whether or not you want these images to be raster or hybrid or a vector. And I always select uh, hybrid because they're a lot cleaner. The raster images are kind of fuzzy, dirty looking if you really look at them closely. But that's one reason why I don't do a lot of layout. Uh, you see how long it took to change the page there. Now I've got these kind of set up, and this is one thing I was going to ask Roger. I've kind of got these set up as perspectives, and I'm going to do another sheet probably. Uh, let me just copy. Let's see, I should have, let me delete that one. I'm gonna duplicate, I'm gonna duplicate this one. And then I'm going to delete these. And I'm gonna show him the difference between, and show you the difference between the sort of perspective view and the what we would consider in architecture just the typical elevation views but what I have to do then is I have to create uh, new scenes in in uh, SketchUp so I have to create a new front I'm going to say front uh, what are we going to call this parallel projection PP yeah, we're going to call it parallel for front PP. That'll designate it from its uh, other the other front. So you can see it's sort of in a perspective. That's not the front. Let's go to the front. <laughs> it's kind of in a perspective view. You can see the other columns. You can see the disappearing soffits on the side. But if I turn this to parallel projection, you see it turns into this boring architectural looking <laughs> and then I would just update that so then I would just create all those views I'll go down here and create another one called uh, right PP right PP and I'll go to that view you see how boring that is Let's see, yeah, see I have gotten to where this view, these views don't even kind of make sense to me. At first I was like, what's that sticking out? Well, that's the roof on the front. So I'm going to 
update that. Then I'm going to do a back. I probably, probably could have done this in a more simple way just by showing it to him online. But I kind of wanted to have uh, some layout content because I don't have any. So then we're going to look at the back view and just kind of get it where you want it. Once you, once you get this set up, you don't want to move it. So you want to get it to where you've got a little space around it and you know, you've got it where you want it because I'll show you why in a minute. If you, if you move this, it's going to affect your drawings and layout. Plus, and this is going to be left, left PP. <laughs> Parallel projection. And so now we need to go to the left and I want to get that kind of where I want it and update that. So if I just go from left, see that's the left perspective. That doesn't that look much nicer than left parallel projection. <laughs> so this is what you would see on an architectural drawing, a working drawing construction drawings though see and then they're kind of boring like that the thing that is it is a little easier to set up in layout because what you're literally doing is importing the drawing and oops I didn't mean to grab its rotation rotational point but I'm going to kind of get this window set up what you want to do in, in layouts kind of get your your viewport set up and then um, go to your scenes make sure it's on the front okay why are we not there we go and then click off one thing I've learned is click off and then click back on and then do the scale you know what I just realized is I want to do front oh look I have I need to update the drawing that's what it is update the model because I don't have I didn't have the the new viewports the new scenes okay well did I save the drawing gotta go back to sketch up and save it <laughs> now I can go to layout and try to update it again I should be able to pick from there we go. Front perspective. Now I'm going to make sure that's the right. I can look up here in my little window or little viewport thing here and see. Now I want to choose the scale. A quarter inch. And I knew that was going to get bigger. That's why I left my box bigger. Get this up a little bit. So I'm going to have to make I'm going to have to bring these title marks down a little bit. And see, a lot of this is just getting your sheet set up. I'm going to actually copy this viewport up. And then I've got that as the right. It's going to be bigger. So I'm going to go pick my scene, right, PP. And I'm going to update it. And what you need to do is make sure this little box is clicked right here, preserve scale, so that when I'm changing the box, the viewport size, it's not changing the scale. I'll show you what it does. If I click that off, you see, and I, I, I move that around, it will attempt to kind of rescale it based on the view. But what I want it to do is preserve my uh, quarter inch scale. Quarter inch. There we go. You see, now it's a quarter inch per equal foot. I'm going to move that over just a little bit. 
Now this is going to be my left elevation seams left and what I want to do there is just try to let's see let me get the scale make sure the scale is quarter inch it is and I want to just kind of line up these uh, you know the, the grade the grade lines on there and then now this kind of makes more sense but I don't know I just like taking advantage of having a SketchUp as a software I may have to change the scale on these Need to move that down. This is supposed to be the back seeds back. For some reason you have to go up and reset that if i copy the viewport sometimes you'll have to reset it to get it to show the actual view you're wanting to show and i may have to That's close enough. So you can kind of see, and before I start putting a lot of labels on these, um, let me get this more lined up with the other one, with this one. Looking at lower or not? There we go. So, you know, normally I would go around and start putting notes on here but what I'm going to do is send him the these two sheets and uh, I'm going to rename this elevations PP and see what he thinks see if I have any questions hello it is kind of big <laughs> are you chilling on your deck Barrett Hey Richard, how's it going? Which CAD computer program do you use? I use SketchUp. This one right here. And uh, I'm getting ready to do some sections because now that you can see the exterior of the building and you can see here this is just showing the typical construction drawing view this is my sheet 24 by 36 and I like to show them in perspective mode like this it gets a little wacky sometimes when you have a porch you know a real long porch on the front but I do like the perspective view where you can see you know the columns going back and the disappearing soffits and all that so I'm gonna let him decide sometimes you can see more information when you have this sort of perspective on the job than this you see I'm looking I know there's columns behind those columns but I you know I drew it so um, I know they're there but uh, the next thing I'm going to do is set up my I think I already have a foundation plan going and that's just a Okay, so I need to turn off some roofing. <laughs> I need to go to roof. And looks like I need to put some items in the roofing. There we go. Yeah. Roof cladding. And that should go away. And then this, let me make sure I'm not picking the whole thing. Yeah, that would be roof cladding. That should disappear. Turn that off and then go back 
to my foundation plan. So that's kind of the view I want to have here. And I'm happy with that. So I'm going to update that. And this is the actual model. This is SketchUp. And then the drawing that we, the software that we do our drawings in is called Layout. It comes with SketchUp Pro. It doesn't come with the free version. Because one thing SketchUp has done is made uh, dimensioning and notation really awful <laughs> in SketchUp. So that you will be tempted to buy and it's and it's fine, you know. I, I get it. Um, I want this to be. I want this to be the foundation plan. There we go. And I want to click off and come back. That's kind of a trick I've learned because sometimes when you set the scale for some reason it doesn't it doesn't stick. There we go. Uh, then I want to update that because wait a minute. So I need to save the drawing. See each time I make a change I need to make sure I save it because it's the uh, it's showing that roofing still and I can just update the model in layout and it should go away yeah and then I want to preserve my scale doing that get this in here kind of tight And then I'm going to leave room on this right side over here for dimensions. So I don't want to get too close to the edge. You can see here I've got these details for these footings. And so I'll detail those in a minute. I'll show where those are going to be. But I just want to start off by checking my dimensions on my footings so I'll I'll run a string down here and you can see I've already got some funky things going on here and that's just from where I've been working in the drawing and I also like to just put a typical dimension for the footing when I start off and then I'll put an overall oops a string and you can see 41 3 and 3 quarters so I want that to be more of a logical dimension so I'm going to run some other dimensions here first and then I'll check <clears throat> this one kind of got screwed up a little bit in that um, so that's supposed to be two feet I'm not sure why but the nice thing about uh, SketchUp and the dimensions uh, dimensioning is in layout is that it will if I change something uh, I don't want to do that I want to do I'm trying to keep this hierarch hierarchical <laughs> thing where I'm just hitting the leading edge and then on the last one I hit the width like that. And then I'll and right now I'm just throwing in dimensions to get my to 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 get to make sure I've got all this stuff out of the way. So I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop this down a little bit. And then I'm gonna give that Dimension a little more room. It's not so crowded. Uh, then what I can do, see, let me run a, a string up here and I remember ten foot six is right on these two right here, because I spread I spread these out for the doors. what I'm suspect of is these and this should actually be 40 feet yeah so that's correct so this side is the length is correct I think what happened over here is I've got those porch columns and I just need to check to see how I want to do that um, 
as far as the exact locations because I don't like these weird like I'd rather this be six foot ten <laughs> I'm gonna put a dimension here because again I want to hit this slab because I know it's supposed to be 20 feet and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit that those are supposed to be two feet I don't like that four foot nine and seven eighths so see now what I'll do is let me hit this overall I don't like that 51 7 and 3 eighths so is that what we got down here yeah so now what I'll do is I'll go back to my let me save this I've learned to kind of save as I go back and forth Let's see if I got any questions SketchUp got it interesting AT is great he helped me with back porch design years ago oh hey Chris <laughs> what is Slante Abigail is that uh, is that French or Italian or Spanish <laughs> I'm from Tennessee so you'll have to explain <coughs> so I'm gonna go back to my SketchUp and I'm gonna check let's see what do I want to check I don't like this First of all, I don't like this overall dimension, okay? So I like things to be logical. So I got 41, three and three quarters, and over here I've got 40 feet. And the reason for that is, is because I've got these, if I go back to my front view, uh oh, I gotta, I gotta get my, my roofing turned on. I've got these columns that line up with the edge of the building, right? Well, I want those footings to stick out. I don't want these footings to be, I don't want these footings to be even with the other, these footings, because you see, it'll put a column too close to the court, to the edge of the footing. But I do want to have some kind of logic here. So, I don't like the, uh, let's see what my middle footings are like. What we'll probably do, because I want to demonstrate how SketchUp will automatically change this. I want to move, let's see, half. I move out a half and three eighths. Or, let's move back three eighths and a half. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this back three eighths because I don't like that three eighths on there. You kind of you got to understand I'm a contractor too, and uh, so when I see these weird dimensions that architects give me, I laugh at them. See, so I don't want somebody laughing at me <laughs> because of my dimensions. So now I'm going to update that. I'm going to save it. Now, sometimes you can't avoid those weird dimensions. But now, when I go to look at uh, the layout, I start to say look out, and I update the model, you'll see now I have a nice clean 9 foot 1, and I should have a nice clean 9 foot 2. Now, I don't mind that. Um, they should be the same. What have I got here? Now I don't like this, nine foot two and or forty one two and seven eighths. Hmm. Something tells me that my what is my tolerance on my dimensions? Eighth inch. Hmm. That's puzzling because it's almost like one of my footings just changed size. What do I want? What do I want that to be? I don't, I'd want this to be 40, 40 feet plus at least. So that's 14, it's seven inches. Let's uh, change this to a quarter inch. There we go. That's better. I like that, that's better. 
because I didn't want this length to be longer. And then now let's go to the front. I don't understand this six foot nine and three eighths. Uh, so I've got, or six foot nine and three quarters. I've got 51 seven and three eighths here. I don't like that either. So let's go back to our drawing and we'll see if we can't remedy this. Uh, what I did was I had these footings sticking out over here. I see one problem right there. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if this whole row is a uh, whole, whole row is like that. Let's see if this one is. Yeah. So let me turn off the containers for a second. And I will select those. Are those all sticking over like that? Well, those aren't. That's odd. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, I can see them sticking in there. And this one's weird. This is supposed to be down with these. Like that. Why is that? Why is that? We're going to move this back. Let's see if it's three eighths quarter hmm All right let's see what it is now eight foot eight that's no, still weird for some reason uh I'm gonna move these in that nine sixteenths And you wonder how all these can get off. It's really easy, honestly, uh, when you're when you're editing these drawings. And um, you've got whole groups of things selected like that, and you think you're hitting like a, a center point or something like that, and you missed it because you're in a hurry. And yeah, eight foot nine. So let's go over here. Let's see what our deal is. We're correct over here, but we want to be that eight foot nine over here also. Yeah, somehow. Through the years, <laughs> it got moved 13. 13 sixteenths. There we go. Now let's go back. Let's go to our foundation plan and we will save. Why are these? Why are those something that's funky, funky, funky? Oh, I know what it is. I got it. I got you. Save this and we'll go to our layout drawing and then we'll look at our dimensions again. We'll update this. Update. We'll go down here 12 foot and 5 eighths. Hmm. That's actually supposed to be 12 feet. All right. But I like this. I like this nice clean 6 foot 9. I like that. Nice clean six foot nine. And I just need to get rid of this half inch right here. I don't like that. So what we're gonna do is what do we got up here? Six foot nine. 
Four foot nine. That's right. Okay, we're getting close. We're getting close. I'm going to move this. Let's see if I can afford to move this. Let's see. What have I got? Any other questions? Just want to keep up with the questions here. Um, let me go back to my front elevation and then look and see if I can afford to come in a half inch. I can. I can't afford to. I want to go out a half inch. I think, I think we're going to be fine if we go in a half inch. There we go. Now the deal with these other footings over here Somebody's trying to call me. Hello? Mr. Griffey? Yes. Hi, this is Laura with the Hickson Home Depot. Yes. Uh-huh. Is... Hey, I, you forgot to put um, an alternate pickup, so we just need to verify that, um, y that Mr. Hernandez Gonzalez can pick up your order. Eric is a good guy. He He's, met, he's a good friend, and he helps me out a lot. All right, sweetie. So that's fine. We'll um, go ahead and get it really soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Uh -huh. My trim guy, my trim subcontractor, <laughs> that's funny, uh, offered to go pick up the, some lock sets this morning at Home Depot and put them on. And I was really happy about that. And uh, they're calling to confirm it's okay that he picks them up. Which is cool. Now, these three right here need to be moved in. Because that's not cool. What happened was, I had these, this slab was not here when we started. And I put the slab in there. And see, this is why it's healthy to go through this process um, of checking your dimensions. So now it should be cool. Foundation plan. It should be cool. Save. Go back to layout. We'll update our drawing again. Those popped over. Like that. Now before I put any more dimensions, I want to decide where I'm going to put my detail references. This is that these are those uh, pier footings. So what they what you do is you take a, a auger, a 24 inch auger, drill a hole in the ground, and you know you're gonna fill it up with concrete. But on the top of the ground, you're gonna frame up these 24 inch squares, which are easier to work with, they're easier to measure off of than something round. Something round just hardly ever gets put in the right place. And so that's that. So I'm going to reference that detail. I want to just pick one of these. And I'm going to put that right there. Because that says typical. That means wherever you see one of these, it's one of these. Okay. So 2A1. Are we on sheet A1? Sheet A1. And over here is 2. Detail 2. Now, I forgot what I had. Oh, this is a post connection. This is from another job, but I'm going to use it. I need to, I need to fix this where these, where you can see the bottom of that. Let's turn that to a different style and architectural design style. See, I don't use this architectural design style because it would use too much ink and um, that's why I use that hidden line style but what you can do is kind of come in here and put your own little you know I don't know if I want to do that I may get, I may do it in the drawing but I just wanted to show the difference between the different styles the uh, printing uh, let's see construction oh construction document yeah that just takes out the background what we want to do is do this hidden line. And you see, the problem is the hidden line style doesn't show 
all of the edges sometimes and I don't want to rig this drawing so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just drawing those lines to show you where it would be I'm going to delete those lines and I'm going to fix it but what, what I'm trying to do now is locate that detail marker this right here and I just want to pick another spot where let's see uh, the thing is I don't show the column I don't show the post on here so let me go back this is a different kind of a different drawing I want to explode this I'm going to put these in their own layer then I can turn them on in that view I'm going to put them in the wall and do I have a porch post I'm going to put them in a layer called porch posts I'm going to go back up here and put them in that and then I'm going to go to my foundation layer and turn them on let's see that if I do that I'll have to um, go through here and turn all this other stuff off <laughs> Where's porch post? I'm going to turn those on and then turn everything else off in wall. There. You see now you can see the po the posts sitting on the pad. And I like that. That's usually what I'll do. And I'll update that view or update that scene. And I'll save my drawing. So you can see there's a lot of back and forth. And I go to my layout. And now I'm going to update this. And model reference and now you can see that the post are showing up so now it's not going to seem weird I'm going to flip this left to right and then I need to go in here and flip the flip this to left to right and flip this left to right and I'll probably have to shorten this up, but first I'm going to put it where I want it. I just want to put it on one of these like that. And I want to move this. That seems kind of a little bit wanky. I'm going to move it over a little bit. Well, that's where it belongs anyway. Okay. So now you see, when you see that detail marker, you say, oh, what is that? And you go to three, eight. We're already on A1, so you go to look at your marker 3a1 you say oh here's the detail I'm got a 6x6 post I got a Simpson Simpson a a b a b a z max post base and I've got my pier footing and a half inch by six expansion anchor but what I'm going to do is go fix that where I'm not going to do it now but I'll fix it so it looks better it's more clear uh, I want this to be on that hybrid see this little thing right here it's set on raster uh, and you've got three options vector raster hybrid hybrid is a splitting the difference you see how the lines got darker all of a sudden it'll darken up the lines and make it read better but it won't be as mem uh, taxing on the memory of your computer if I had set it at, at a full vector uh, I think what it does is vectorize the edges and nothing else I think that's what it does but let's see here Let's see if I have any questions no questions okay so this is kind of the process of getting this sheet this sheet imagine this sheet is a 24 by 36 sheet you have them printed at your local architectural printing place I think Kinko's FedEx does it too 
any place like that. I, I usually, I used to keep a plotter <laughs> and they're expensive to maintain. They're expensive to, and so I finally got smart and, and ditched the plotter when it wore out. And now I just send my drawings to the printer. So I'll have a, my cover page. And again, I've got this set on vec on a hybrid, uh, rast instead of raster. So it takes a minute for it to, uh, you know, render this image right here. But this, what I'm going to do is correct this. Because really what we're looking at is, if you were going to tell somebody what size building this is, you would say it's like, let's see, so 20, 22, and, and 16 is, uh, let's just measure from here. <laughs> We can measure our the dot the daddy, the dashed lines can't talk this morning. The dashed lines are my containers, and that's our slab. So if I went from there, thirty-eight by forty. So that's kind of the size of the building. You typically don't put the dimensions of porches if you're just going to say I've got a 30, uh, 38 by forty. Thirty-eight by forty. And I, I do this to help me remember projects because when I, whenever I see this 38 by 40 and I say, and this is the two story, I had, this is from another job, obviously. So I'll say it's, uh, something like two story. Container configure or just container. No, I might just leave that yeah, configuration. Cause this that's the kind of thing that helps me. And so then I'll copy that. Then that'll get put in our right here. except it's the wrong size. <laughs> and uh, kind of, it's not working out good this morning, is it? Nothing is working out. Nothing's working out this good this morning. Let's just undo all that. It's going to be quicker just to type it. Uh, what did I say up here? A storage building. Let's see. I don't know what we're going to call this storage building. Uh, I need to see. This is what I need to do. I need to get with. Uh, I'm, I need to get with Roger and see what he wants to actually call this. But anyway, so there's your title, and then we go to our foundation plan, and. We typically would have, um, yeah, I think I will try to do a floor plan and because I've got windows. So what I'm going to do now is go back here to the draw to model and I'm going to set up a view, see how this works out. I haven't really done this before where I've set up a, uh, a section for a floor plan with the containers because there hasn't been that much detail. But what you would do is you take the section tool, get it up here on top, or get it to where it'll lay flat, like that, and then raise it up to the height, usually about five feet off the floor. You want to keep it below the headers. You want to be able to see your openings. That's the idea. And then you would set it on top view and parallel projection instead of perspective. And then you would turn off your uh, section planes and that's kind of what you would end up with. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the grade because that line is a little confusing. And 
I'm trying to figure out if there's a value to this. If these if these openings will show up. Sometimes what I actually do is I'll draw a separate two dimensional drawing for the plan where I can show these um, openings better. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and just set this up as a, um, we'll just call it a floor plan. Since this is more of a building configuration than a typical job like that I've worked on with these shipping containers before. Style scenes. We want to go, we want that to be kind of early in our, we want that to be before this. So we'll put it right here. And then we go in here and call it floor plan. So this would be the first, and this is why I'm doing this, because I have two floors. First, I can't see. First floor plant. Can't type or see. Okay, and I'll save that. Update. Then what I'll do is I'll take another. Let's turn off our section cuts for a minute and I'll add one for the second floor. Okay, and which one is this one? Which one is this one? Which one? I want it to go up, and we're going to make it active. What is this? Now I'm suspect of this one. Active. Active cut. So I want it to be up here on this level. I want it to be right below the header because I don't, I don't want this I don't want it cutting through that porch roof too much because it's going to be a distraction can I see and then I'll cut off my section planes and I'll kind of get it lined up where I want it and save oh I'm going to make a, a scene I'm just going to go ahead and add one before I screw up. I've, not, I've accidentally overwritten scenes before by not paying attention. This is going to be the second. I'm just going to put two to the floor plan and save that. So I have to decide if, if there's enough information. If, if this shows... What is this? Oh. Hmm. What is that? These containers have some kind of weird uh, thing in them. So I'm starting to I'm start to lean towards creating my own two-dimensional drawing for this, and I've done this a lot. Because sometimes this doesn't offer much information. Like for example, if I were to draw a rectangle, uh, eight by forty, and then I were to say, oh, it has two inch, you know, walls or whatever, two inch, right? And then I got rid of that, and then I said, oh, so where is that? Let's just line it up with this see I can't even that's why this doesn't offer a lot of value I can't even tell where the corners of the thing are but anyway just for example let's say I have a window that's over here at uh, you know six feet or something six feet and I know it's a I know they're four foot windows so I go 48 then I draw myself a little line there to indicate the window 
but then I take out this you see now when I go to when I go to uh, dimension this this that's a window a door would look like this let's just say 36 inches door would look like a door would be even more obvious and then what you would do is you put the door swing 36 and you'd put your little arc there uh, like that and get rid of your face again you see now if I go to my second floor plan you may not be able to see this, but I can see, I can see more information here, just from creating a two-dimensional plan, than trying to decipher all this mess, you know, that your model creates by doing a section through it. So I'm going to decide. I'll decide later. Let me see if I have any questions. Hey, Tony Alexander here. Great job on this one. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for watching. So what I may do is, let's just say for the fun of it, I I put this on the uh, the first floor or whatever, and I and I up and I save this. You see, if I was going to do this, I would have uh, this over here. And believe it or not, a lot of architects who use uh, 22 feet, a lot of architects who use SketchUp will have a two-dimensional plan of their of the of the plan, right? Because really, what you're trying to do is convey information to the the person who's building it. You're not trying to create some convoluted drawing that nobody can understand, right? So the model is pretty in 3D, but in 2D, it's not very discerning, right? So if I'm looking at this, I know I've got two containers, I've got a slab, I've got doors, and the windows, you can't see them, but they show up. As a matter of fact, if the wall was thicker, what we normally do is we run a little line down the middle like this to indicate, uh, and then we get rid of the, see, so that might even show up better. It shows up kind of a dark spot, but when I'm dimensioning it, dimensioning it, you'll see that it actually, I'm gonna save this as, I'm gonna update this and I'm gonna save it. Then I'm gonna go back and floor plan. I'm gonna insert it. And I'm going to change this to, uh, oh, I'm going to update the drawing because I don't have my scenes yet. Yeah, I do. Oh, you see it popped up right there. Uh, scenes. I'm going to go to uh, first floor plan and I'm going to go to second floor plan. But you can see. Uh, if I were to, let me set this on a scale right quick. Let's see if quarter inch will fit. Yeah. Make sure this is set to preserve scale. Yeah. You can see now, when I go to dimension this, you know, I can hit that corner easily. I can hit the center of the window. I can hit the center of the door and I didn't I didn't pay attention to where I was where my dimensions were. Sometimes I'll center I'll I'll dimension the center of the door, sometimes I'll do the outside and then I'll do this like that, right? I have my forty. Well, now let's go over here and try to dimension something. 
So first I got to go search for a corner to snap to, and then I got to go in this mess and you know figure out where the center is. And it's just you can see it's kind of a blob of nothingness, and then of course all that. So I don't know if I've demonstrated that very well, but I think what I want to do is the other thing SketchUp does. You know, obviously I'm cutting through a stud wall here. If I was if I was showing a wall in two dimensions in SketchUp, I mean in a normal plan, let's say I'm showing that, that wall here. What I would do is I would draw the wall. It's a let's see, it's twenty two feet by let's see, that's gonna be um six and a half because it's a tall wall. Right, let me get rid of that. Then I would go and I would pick out a hatch. I've got a nice one in here somewhere, wood grain. You see, and that just, that's really much easier to read. I'll show you, a more simple. Go here. Date, save. Again, what you're trying to do is get across to the person building it what what this is. You know, in a simple in a simple as simple as you can. Perspective. Let's see, update model. And all contractors uh, recognize this symbol as a wall. Let me change this to, I'll, here's a good example of where raster versus hybrid. Okay, you see how kind of fuzzy that, that line, those, that pattern is? When I select that viewport and I change it to vector or hybrid, and I go zoom back in, you'll see it darkens things up, but it also, well, when it prints it, it's more clear, but the the uh, that setting makes will make that look better. But you can see that's a simpler view than this. When you're you're looking at this and you're like, what are all these little nubs? And it's just you know, because what you want to do in in architect and construction drawings, you just want to show a symbol for a wall type. And then you you would do a detail mark like this. I don't want that thing. I just want the little flag. I forgot you're gonna and uh, not to spend too much time on that, but. Anyway, that would all be lined up. So you'd have your little detail mark, and then you would go show, you know, you would go draw a detail of the wall. You know, you'd have your stud, you know, your five and a half inches. You know, you draw your sheeting, half inch. half inch one half you know and I'm just kind of quickly trying to do this then you'd show you know the thickness of your siding which it was this uh, one inch uh, you know metal siding he's going to use or whatever it is you know so then you'd be looking at a detail and you'd have um, you know notes pointing pointing to those things so you'd have a typical wall detail. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't you don't try to you don't try to show all of the detail of the wall in the plan view of you know. So that's why we have in construction drawings we'll have symbols uh, for walls and it allows it to be easier to portray or convey the information you're trying to convey. Uh, in that drawing. 
So I have to decide what I want to do about that. But if I go back to here, um, let's see what time is it. I got a little more time. The other thing I wanted to do, let's see if I have any questions. The other thing I wanted to do was um, create some vertical sections to show the inside of the, because there's more information here. Uh, there we go. I want to, uh, and I don't know if this is worth showing or not. I have to just kind of think about all this. Do I want to show a view? Again, you're trying to show, you're trying to figure out what information you want to convey. Um, so we would set this up, kind of get it close. And then typically you would have this set on parallel projection. And then why is it still on? That's weird. There we go. And then you would turn off your section plane. And so you'd end up with something like that. And the purpose for this would be to just show the openings on that wall. And you typically wouldn't dimension openings in a section view like this, but you could, you know, I got to fix this circular stair. It's supposed to go all the way down to the floor. <laughs> So that's another um, another question. Uh, a lot of this comes down to what the owner needs. If if the owner is building it himself, what does he need? Uh, so I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna add these at the bottom. This is I'm gonna call this building section. We'll call it section. Looking left. And then we'll just um, update that. And I'll kind of back out. I'll go back to my front view again. And then I'll set one looking the other way because we have another interesting... Really what I'm doing is setting up some elevations of the interior. Um, okay of the interior because you can't see them obviously um, any other way I don't need this let's leave it right about there so on this one I want to be looking the other way and I want to have a parallel projection and I'll get it kind of lined up and then I want to turn off my my viewports, my section plane, sorry. So you can see there's the other, now I, I haven't really finished this view, but this is a little confusing and, and that's why you have to think, do I really need this? Because I'm looking through openings um, into the back wall and you have to ask yourself, well, is this a valuable information? Is it would, would this portray or convey information to the owner that is needed or, or are you just printing more sheets? So what I would do is look at it and if I can do it, if I can show these openings in a plan view, I'll probably do that instead of setting up this view because I'll show you here, if I turn this into a perspective mode, you can see that really what we're doing is looking through two big openings into the back wall. Now I have done this before, literally like this, where I keep it in like a 3D mode so that you can actually see that, if there's nothing over here, so I'm not missing anything. So that you can actually see, and if, if the owner doesn't mind watching this long boring video, <laughs> I'll ask him if that's what he wants to do. Um, you know. I've actually literally sat in meetings with people before and say, tell me when to stop. They go, oh, right there. I like that one. <laughs> I 
so I'll stop it and save it. But you see, we already have that view uh, on the outside. We have that as our right elevation. So, you know, if, if all I'm showing in this whole thing that has any value is just the op these three openings, I can show that on this plan view pretty easily. Uh, I would just have two of them. Where are we? Floor second. You see, I would just have another one of these 2D plans. Let me move this one over. Maybe that's the first floor, and then maybe this is the the second floor. See, and I would show that. I would just show that and call it the second floor plan, and I would show all the openings and dimension. And I'd be able to dimension them easily. So that's probably what I'll do. My eyes are watering. I've been looking at this computer screen so long. So that's kind of, that's the work of this. You know, the, the, the model is fun to build, right? It's fun to, to draw the model. But, and that's, I guess that's what makes it enjoyable, right? Now, when you get into this actual construction drawings, that's the work of it right <laughs> uh, and it's the important part because when I do this foundation plan there's a lot that goes into this really you know the details how you're telling somebody how to to support their building is really important you got to research the local that's why I have here verify local soils and codes because you want to make sure that these are deep enough uh, depending on where they may have to be six foot deep up in Washington State and only you know three foot deep down here in Tennessee um, so that's an important thing uh, but one of the main thing I wanted to do this morning was get these uh, elevation sheets set up and ask the owner he may say he likes both pages and that's fine I'll keep both pages I'll just note them but this is a little laborious because you see I clicked on that elevation page and because there's a lot of rendering that's going on behind the scenes right now it won't it won't actually change the view until I get until it renders that and the, the, another frustrating thing about SketchUp is that it literally only uses one core of your uh, graphics card I found this out the hard way through doing some animation work for a company called Metal Buildings. There we go, we finally. But I mean, I've got an RTX 2080, which is not a bad graphics processor. Uh, so and if you go, I've actually researched this and, and gone through it. I won't show you all the boring stuff, but if you go look at your graphics processor when it's working, well, I gotta turn off the, that's funny. Um, those are those floor plans showing up in the, in these elevations. I got to go turn them off, but um, you'll see that you'll have about eighty percent of your processor not working while while it's trying to do this work. And that's one complaint I've had with SketchUp, and I've sent you know I'm just a little guy, so when I complain about something, they don't do much about it. But uh, I had another more of an expert. Of SketchUp and computer graphics tell me that um, you could have you know a five thousand dollar whiz bang computer and SketchUp still just going to use uh, minimal resources. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to show him this this view. I'm going to clean this up though before I do because I don't want those. I'm going to actually move these. 2D plans over out of the way. Um, and I'll update this and that, that little trashy stuff right there will go away. Hopefully. But you can see it working. Now I've now and now it's trying to update this. And these containers are really bad because they have all these little faces on them. Um, you know, so SketchUp's having to render every little face on the containers instead of just 
you know, it's not it's not taking time to render the the siding that's taking so long. It's the contain shipping containers themselves. I'm just going to let that go in the background. And but it's a cool it's a cool building. It's it's kind of big and it's going to be it's going to cost a few pennies to build. Let's see if we have anything else. Kevin, I caught you live. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? And why don't you put eye beams in the footings for containers? Ah, oh, you don't need to. The eye uh, beams in footings for containers. You don't need that because a container has its own eye beam built into the bottom of it. You see? It's not an I beam, it's a channel. You see? So, if you were to just look at a, um, a section of a, uh, just the container itself. Oh, shoot, it's going to do the whole thing in it. Where is that? Where did it go? Good Lord. Oh, there it is. Never mind. There it is right there. If we do a section of just the container itself, you can see on the bottom it has a channel. And that's what's carrying the load of the floor. So all you have to do is put these spot footings in to carry the load, really, of the roof above it. So what I have are these steel columns. Let's go back to our front view to get rid of all those sections. What I have is these steel columns that go up and bolt to the LVLs that carry the roof. So if I turn off the roof, uh, let's see, roof wall. Got too many, too many layers here. Metal roofing, sheeting, sheeting. Yeah, you can see my trusses are setting. Let's turn the soffit off. My trusses are sitting on this LVL beam, uh, which is a very strong laminated veneer lumber, engineered lumber. Uh, these columns are bolted to the beam and the containers. And that's what supports the roof. Those those four columns. There's well, the corner of a shipping container will contain will carry loads. So you've got a column there going down all the way. You've got a column here, 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 and the other corner of the shipping container is structural. And that's the way shipping containers are set up. When they stack them up on the ships. There's actually a gap between the roof and this, this channel of the one above it. So the ceiling, the roof of the shipping container is not meant to carry a load, but the floor is meant to carry the load. And then here I've got these, I don't have, do I have them on there? Yeah, I've got these clips that are welded to the shipping containers, to the, to the steel columns. And it should be then again down here at the bottom. I've got to add them. They get uh, welded again down here. So that's some of the detail I have to add. So those steel columns are going to support the roof and also tie the shipping containers together. Because you can imagine if you stack two tall shipping containers on top of each other, you have a hinge condition here. You know, if the wind blew on this, you know, they would want to buckle here at this joint. So what you're trying to do is, is use these steel columns to tie the shipping containers together and also uh, support the roof, support this beam, which supports the trusses. And you're also bracing the building laterally by clipping these the shipping containers to these columns. So it's a system, it's a stru structural system. And uh, one of the views I set up is a roof framing view. Let's see, do we have any questions? 
tornadoes, tornadoes, sharknadoes would be worse. Let's see, they'll just weld down the container. Yeah, well, yeah, what you do is, um, if you're talking about that, there's, so what will happen is these, these, I don't have the bolts and all the things shown yet, I'm not finished. These columns will be bolted down to the footings. Okay, then in turn, and I have these others, if you look here, you see the shipping container has this four inch plate uh, angle and it's it's bolted down to the con uh, concrete and then you run a weld, you weld these to the containers. Uh, and those are those go on the corners and then in the uh, on the interim the here I need to add <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going horse talking too much. So I would go in here and take this and copy it down. And since I have these set up as components, these will I will get one of these on every on every post C. You can see back here, it's copying it to that post too. So, this, <clears throat> all the, the shipping containers are welded to the columns and the columns are bolted down to the concrete. So you don't need any kind of, I don't, I don't like embedding steel into concrete. So it's like an automatic rust machine. Uh, if these, if these L brackets, these brackets I have rust, you can replace them easily, right? I've seen people embed steel plates in the concrete. Well, good luck with that if you ever have to change them out. You're having to move, you have to move this entire you know thing to be able to get to it. So the best way to do this is to, and what I would do is paint pitch on the bottom of these containers where the steel makes contact with the concrete. See, so that's that's really the better way to do that, <clears throat> in my opinion. But if you weld them together, we don't bolt, we weld. You use bolts and welds, okay? So sometimes bolted bolted connections are better sometimes than welded connections. If you look at any kind of steel structure. Uh, that's prefabricated, you'll notice that all the connections are bolted. Um, I mean, you can just do a Google search. Bolted steel structure. And you'll come up with all kinds of pictures of bolts. See? Bolted flanges. What you, you weld, it's a combination of welding you weld the flanges, but you bolt the beams together. This is how things are assembled in the field. Right? All the all the steel is prefabricated, uh, so all your flanges are well are welded together. All all the things that actually connect them are welded. But when it comes to the actual connection, you see all these bolts. So it's a combination of bolts and welding, but you you. When you're welding, you're fabricating. You can see here, here's a diagram of bolted connections. When you're, when you're, what happens is steel buildings are fabricated before they're erected, okay? So this beam is fabricated, this column is fabricated, this, this beam is fabricated. You see, on this, when they, when they fabricated this column, there's a flange that was welded to it. And then, when they brought all the steel out to the site, the guys who erected the steel take a crane and set it up there and bolt it together. You see? So it's not, everything on a steel building is not just welded. That's kind of a myth on the internet. <laughs> I see this all the time. I see people like, why aren't you welding? Well, it's, it's, you weld where it's appropriate and you bolt where it's appropriate. That's the way we build things. <clears throat> Well, if you were building a storm shelter, you, yeah, that's different, you know, 
Um, you might have bolted connections on the interior, uh, but we're not talking about a storm shelter, Kevin. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> um, much better off uh, with a combination of bolted and, and welded. It's like here. It's like here. We're not, you know, um, you have a choice here of either tech screwing this plate on or welding it on. So you could weld it here, but you're not going to weld it to the wood beam. So you lag it. Okay, here, same thing. If somebody wants to weld this clip on here, that's great. But you can also take a tech screw. You know what a tech screw is, right? Tech screw is a, a bolt that basically bolts into metal. It makes your house a storm shelter. I've been accused of going over. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you know, you know, there's a thing, you know, there's a thing called efficiency too. Uh, if if a bolted connection is as strong and dependable, which they are, because building steel buildings have been look at, I mean, hundred years have been being built this way. Okay, so if if the efficiency in, in construction. If you're not managing efficiency, then you're you're really losing money and you're wasting people's time, other people's time and money. So here, um, you know, let's just look at tech screws. See, tech screws, and they come in all different shapes and sizes, are meant to drill through metal. You see, they have a little drill bitty thing on the end, and then thread into metal. Right, so depending on the forces that you have, which are not that much right here, at this at this zone in the, in our structural system, we're it's not as critical. This connection is not as critical as this one down here, right? Because this is where your hinge condition is between your two uh, uh, containers. Where's my clips? There they are. Right. So this is where you want your welds, right here. You see, this would all be welded. But up here, so what you're doing is, if I can save this guy an hour of welding uh, for e on every column, I've saved him a whole day's worth of welding on this job. And it ain't gonna matter a hill of beans uh, structurally. You know, the building will still be there, you know, 100 years from now, as long as it's not no earthquakes or sharp NATOs. You see, so that's what we have to do in construction. We can't just, we can't use the most expensive system for every little component. We have to think about cost in a, uh, uh, you know, value engineering. How do you think they came up with trusses? Look, you, I mean, I mean, somebody would say, oh, those are two befores. Yeah, they're two befores. Guess what? They're two before us because we figured out over a hundred years that because of the webbing of the way trusses are designed, that you can get by with lighter weight materials and if, if they're braced properly, right? So after the invention of these trusses, we save people lots of time and money uh, uh, through materials and labor savings, right? We didn't just say, oh, let's use tuba 12s for rafters because it's better. You know, we, we, we're, not, we don't, we're not into the, we're not trying to brag our way through a construction project. We're trying to develop efficient uh, systems. Am I preaching? I feel like I'm preaching now. It makes sure, other than that point you're doing. Oh, listen to you. All right, Kevin, you're in timeout. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I need to put myself in timeout because it's ready. I'm, I need to go get ready for a meeting today. But that's kind of where we are. Really what I was wanting to show today was just how going between the model in 3D and the, and the construction drawings uh, works. And in the end, when the guy's building it, this is what he's going to use, right? He may go in the evenings or he may... He may crank up the, the model that I send him and he may look at it, you know, 
Uh, I don't know. He may be like me. I take my computer out to all my jobs, my construction jobs, right? And I, and I'll show my framer stuff and whatever. And it works, works, works really well. But 99% of the time, your contractor's just going to have this, a 24 by 36 sheet with all the two dimensional drawings on it. And you're going to say, wow, I paid all that money for that 3d model. <laughs> But anyway, guys, unless there's any other questions, it's all looking great. Thanks, Richard. <clears throat> see, Kevin, see how nice Richard is. Other than that, you, oh, you said that already. That's funny. If you can, watch Andrew. I know I've watched Andrew. If you haven't seen my video on how he could have. Did you know Andrew, Andrew, If you, and you go back and look at this, okay? Andrew took my detail I, I told him, I told Andrew when he first started on his container castle, I would help him, right? But no, he's a big time YouTuber. He and he's a young whippersnapper. He couldn't listen to me. I told him about this system of putting the columns on the outside with the clips. Now I've been doing this for years, right? Okay. So go back to his videos after he got, after he got his containers up. All right, and I started bringing up these points about structural qualities of containers. You go back and look before he put the steel, I think it was before he put the steel on the roof, he literally went back and put the columns up, okay? If you go back and look at all his steel, his, his container, he didn't have these, he didn't have these steel columns on the outside to support the loads. He went in and poured a huge concrete slab on the second floor and there's literally not much at all to, he was putting all that weight concrete on the top of these containers. These containers are maybe a couple hundred pounds per square foot they'll, they'll carry. They weren't, they weren't designed to carry a concrete floor. Okay. And then I think he probably had some cracking going on in his concrete. So he went back and put the steel columns on the outside, just like this. Okay. And all you gotta do is watch his videos. <laughs> To, to see but anyway yeah I like Andrew I like his videos and I watch them but I'm just saying you know people he's a people are good at what they do right um, uh, Andrew <clears throat> Andrew is good at heavy equipment he's good at welding he's good at you know but he's not a builder and it's okay he, he can learn yeah I wish I had his money too and I think his wife probably has as much money as he does or more but um yeah you just have to realize what your talents are and if you if you don't have experience in one field if i was going to do brain surgery i wouldn't attempt it right i would get a brain surgeon and i would at least ask him how how do you do that you know but some people are just have bigger kahunas uh, and they have more money uh than really they know what to do with so they'll just start doing something and later find out it's it's not it wasn't the best idea and that's what happened to Andrew but he corrected it it's cool right he went back you saw him he poured these footings down at the bottom he ran the columns up and it'll probably last another 50 years now but I can tell you before when he first started and he had all that concrete sitting on top of these containers that was not a good idea because he poured if you notice he poured it like eight inches thick too you know, concrete weighs a hundred pounds per cubic foot. Okay, so on every every cubic foot, uh, um, you know, you've got a hundred pounds. <coughs> excuse me. Actually, yeah, it was close to a hundred pounds per square foot that he had. Uh, it wasn't. It was not quite a hundred pounds because it was only eight. I think it was like eight inches thick. But anyway. See, you got me all sidetracked, Kevin. I thought because he had no wife, he was able to. No, I think um, I think his through his YouTube channel being so successful, most I would say a lot of his toys are bought with his YouTube money. Because he probably makes I don't know what ten grand a month off of YouTube. Maybe not that much. I don't know. I don't know how many subscribers he has. I know he gets a lot of views, so, but I like his channel. I watch his videos. Uh, I think sometimes he does stuff 
like in his last video, he parked his lift beside a tree and you knew, you just knew what was going to happen. You knew that tree was going to fall on the lift the way he was doing it. Sometimes I think he does things like that just so he'll have some content because he likes, I, I, I said, I made one comment in one of his videos and I think he, he might have banned me. I said, you just like tearing things up so you can fix them. Because if you notice, he's always kind of tearing stuff up. Uh, but anyway, I digress. And I appreciate you guys. Uh, this video is for Roger, and I'm I'm wasting all his time talking about other stuff. But anyway, it's fun. I like I like talking about other stuff. But the main thing is here. You've got you know we've got gravity on Earth, and we've got loads that are created by gravity. And we have forces like wind and seismic, and we have to take care of those. And that's what uh, the design process is all about. It's not just about drawing a pretty picture. You hope in the end you have a pretty picture, but really what the design process is about taking care of all of those structural uh, loads that you're gonna that you're running into. So anyway, I'll stop preaching and. I'm going to go eat some peanut butter and banana. When is plant to access the second floor? Oh, uh, I'll show you right quick. This, uh, let me turn the roof off for a second. Oops. He's got this, and I need to fix it. He's going to have a, a circular stair right here. And then we're going to have a, I thought I had already drawn it. We're going to have a little a mezzanine thing that comes across to connect them so that's that's stuff I got to work on it took me a while just to get these windows cut out of the uh, containers and I got all those in now so I got to go back to doing stuff stuff like that it's gonna be a little bridge kind of mezzanine thing going across and I got to fix this circular stair so it goes all the way down <laughs> and uh, Stuff like that. YouTube will still owe me a hundred dollars I paid less. It's thanks to them not paying up. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I have my YouTube money deposited into my business account, so I don't, I don't forget about it. <laughs> it's not that much. <clears throat> we only did three, so. All right, guys, I'm gonna go take a break. I'm probably come back later, and um, I appreciate you guys uh, making comments. Though I, I I do get kind of preachy sometimes, but. I do appreciate the, the comments, and uh, I will see you.